All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for being on the line. I want to thank you for uh, using this uh, this particular tool and system. Now this is part three of our 12 part training series that we're going through today and today is going to be focused on transfer factors. You know those of you who have been involved in this uh, company for a while understand that one of the key selling points is that we have a unique and effective product called Transfer Factor. And so what I want to do today is give you some in-depth information about the way Transfer Factors work, what they are, and exactly what makes them so unique and why they're so powerful. So we're going to get into a lot of technical information here. So obviously, if you have screen share, either on your phone or if you're on a laptop, please uh, use that because there's going to be a lot of information and it'd just be much easier if you were able to um, follow along um, as we go. So it's much easier for you to follow that way. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Well, first off, what are transfer factors? You know, that's the title of today and that's what we're going to get into. So what are they? Well, technically, transfer factors and nanofactors, which we discovered later on, are peptide molecules. Now, a peptide molecule means more than one molecule, okay? It means there's a, actually transfer factors are polypeptide of about 43 different amino acids that make up this molecule. Immunologists refer to transfer factors and nanofactors as cytokines. Now, the reason I'm sharing some of this information is you may want to go out there and look up some of the studies that have been done on transfer factors. Well, they're not all going to say transfer factors. Uh, sometimes they'll be referred to as cytokines. There's a couple of other names that people use for them, but it is, in fact, the transfer factor molecule. Now, we refer to these cytokines as transfer factors or nanofactors because of the information and abilities of these molecules can be transferred to another being. In other words, from one host to a recipient, you can uh, transfer this immunity, transfer this information. In nature, one of the places you see this is when a mother uh, nurses a child. When she gives birth to a child, the first six to eight weeks after a child is born, the mother produces colostrum. Now, during this time, that is where you will find the transfer factor being transferred from the mother to the child. It's only available during the time she's producing colostrum. After about eight weeks or so, the mother begins to produce normal breast milk, and when she does that, the transfer factors are no longer available. So, um, but this is how you can see this in a, in a natural situation where transfer factors, the immune information, the abilities of the immune system is transferred from the host to the recipient. Now, all components of your body function through either touching each other or through nervous system communication. The term cytokines refers to molecules that communicate with other immune system components. Through this communication, transfer factors and nanofactors influence the actions of many other immune system and body components. This is what makes transfer factors so special. They have a greater influence on overall body components than any other nutrient out there. Now you're born with these cells that produce transfer factors which are programmed with information about foreign threats when you come into contact with them. These foreign threats can adversely affect your health. So you're born with the capacity for transfer factors. You're born with transfer factors in your system. Okay. Um, and the cells that produce transfer factors are already in your body. So as you begin to go throughout your life and you experience different things, these transfer factors will retain that information. Now, what are some of the things that transfer factors influence when they get going? Well, they influence the memory of all viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. They're alerting all killer components and killer cells of the immune system, which kill all of the above. Not only that, they affect detoxification, they affect inflammation, and cellular renewal. One might even say that transfer factors are living molecules that actually come from a living being like a human, cow and a chicken in our case, which have very similar immune system and body functions. These transfer factors are created to plug right into many other molecules and cells and are part of a natural domino effect or chain reaction that leads to better health and keeps the body safe from threats. 
what this is saying is that the transfer factors have the ability to retain this information that we spoke about a little bit earlier. Information on foreign threats, information on uh, modulation, on how to regulate the immune system, uh, information on anything that the host has ever experienced. And it can give that information, it can transfer it to you and I. So these transfer factors, they plug right into other cells and molecules, and they create this, this uh, a chain reaction that leads to better health and keeps the body safe from threats by taking information from another source, an outside source. That's what's unique about them. There are advantages to consuming something that comes from a living entity, which was created to function perfectly in a living entity. Again, this is going back to the fact that transfer factors are bioactive. They come from a living source and they can transfer the information. They can transfer that functionality from their previous host to you and I and give us the benefit of not having to necessarily experience all of these different bacteria, funguses, viruses, but yet get the information on how to deal with them from these other hosts. Something created within a living entity carries the wisdom to help it function more effectively within that entity's immune system and body. Okay? For example, when you consume an antioxidant from a plant or a seaweed, the consumed antioxidant cannot distinguish between good oxidation and bad oxidation. Okay? Bad oxidation can cause sickness. It can cause DNA damage, which leads to mutations. It can cause wrinkled skin, wear and tear in your joints, faster aging, overall body deterioration. But there's also good oxidation. And good oxidation includes turning food into energy. Without good oxidation, you wouldn't have any energy and you would starve. Also, the immune system uses oxidation or free radicals to kill germs. Moderate levels of free radicals are beneficial to healing wounds. The nitric oxide molecule's possession of a free radical makes it much more reactive uh, than other signaling molecules. So free radicals are used in the body, body's signaling process. Antioxidants created within the body carry with it wisdom and don't stop oxidation that is involved in developing energy or killing germs. It protects the area around these uh, functions so the oxidation doesn't damage DNA and other cellular components. Transfer factors cause the body to produce natural antioxidants. But in short, your body needs, needs to know what it needs, or your body knows what it needs. Uh, your body uses antioxidants, but the antioxidants and plants in and of themselves aren't intelligent. Plants can't understand your body. Transfer factors and nanofactors can. They are part of your body. Four life transfer factors and nanofactors come from another mammal, which is similar to our own immune system and body functions as humans. When you consume transfer factors and nanofactors, you're educating your personal immune system with knowledge of a more experienced immune system that we get from cows and chickens. So what we're saying is that you can get antioxidants from other sources. Uh, you can even get some immune boosting properties from other sources. The problem is, is that when you're just getting a nutrient or you're just getting a supplementary uh, antioxidant that is not living, that does not come from a living entity, it does not have the information nor does it have the ability to know exactly what it needs to do within the body. It goes in in what we referred to as a shotgun effect. It just kind of goes in and hits everything, okay? Whereas when you have transfer factors, they have the ability to target and have the ability to share the information of exactly how they are going to be best used within the body, how to function, how to go to what's needed and avoid what isn't. Uh, in the instance here with oxidation, there is good oxidation and there is bad oxidation. But if you take just a blanket antioxidant, it's not going to distinguish between the two and it could very possibly be helping the bad oxidation to be worse. So this is why antioxidants and and things of this nature, uh, it's important that they come from somewhere that has the right receptors, has the right knowledge, has the right information to be able to function correctly in your system so that you don't cause damage to other cells. When you can see antioxidants, they are as they travel.
Some are used in the mouth, throat, stomach, and upper intestines. As they move through the body, each organ and tissue uses some of the antioxidants. So at the end of the antioxidant, very little is available. Since the body is sensitive to maintaining oxidation for energy production and other functions, it will wash much of what you consume out of your body. Transfer factors function through communication cells that manufacture the body's natural antioxidants. So transfer factors communicate in the beginning of their journey and throughout the process. The end of the journey is just as strong as the beginning. Now I know this is a lot of really technical information. It's best if you have a screen share that you're following along here because there's a lot of information here about transfer factors. But this is key for you understanding exactly what transfer factor does and what differentiates it from other uh, nutritional products out there. Of course, there are other antioxidant products. Of course, there are other products for the immune system. But what makes this one so different? What we're going through here is explaining to you how transfer factor does differ from the others, why it is superior. In most cases, you're dealing with a nutrient that has no, uh, excuse me, has no intelligence to it, has one job it's supposed to do, and it goes into the system, and regardless of whether doing that job helps or hurts the body, it's going to do its job. This is why, you know, when, when a person has allergies, you don't want to take immune boosters because an allergy is an immune system uh, it's called an autoimmune situation uh, or an autoimmune problem, which the system is misunderstanding what's going on and it's trying to solve a problem that is creating a bigger problem on the back end. Okay, because it doesn't have the information, it goes in again, kind of with a shotgun effect, a blanket effect, and just boosts the whole system, not realizing that by doing so, it's creating a much more uh, significant issue with your allergies. Okay, so. When you have transfer factors, though, it tells the body exactly what it needs to do, and it can actually modulate, suppress the system where it's needed, and only affect the parts of the system that need to be boosted to be boosted. So it's very, uh, it's very smart. It's a very intelligent molecule. Other nutrients do not have this intelligence. Other nutrients are, again, they're, they're derivatives from vitamins, they're extracts, or things of this nature that are one-trick ponies, um, which is something we say here in the States, meaning it does one job and it does it well, but that's all it does. Whereas transfer factors, being that they're a molecule, they um, inherently have several jobs and several different things that they can do just by the very nature of what they are. Another area that transfer factors and nano factors are effective is in detoxification. You can consume detoxifiers, but how much better is consuming a detoxifier that was created within a living entity to detoxify? Well, I'm going to explain that to you. The immune system has developed by being exposed to various threats over many centuries. These chemicals and toxins create more oxidation within our bodies. The body needs extra help with oxidation because mankind has created more than 30,000 different chemicals that humans are exposed to, along with air and water pollution. Things aren't as pure as they used to be. When the settlers came to the U.S. from Europe, they exposed the Indians here to disease, uh, and I say Indians, we're talking Native Americans, they exposed the Native American Indians to disease pathogens that ended up killing some of the Indians. The settlers from Europe were also exposed to pathogens that were common here in the U.S. that also ended up killing some of the settlers. Now that we have massive travel potential, our immune systems are exposed to threats and pathogens that are new to our individual geographic areas. We're exposed to things that we would never come in contact with if we stayed right here. Okay, But since there is travel, myself, I, I do a lot of international travel for, for life and for professional networkers. And you know, every time I go, there's a whole list of, uh, of vaccinations I have to get before I leave you know, in order to be able to travel. Um, that's because there are things that are, that are prevalent and there are things that are very common in these other countries that are not common here in the States, and I have no immunity to them. I, I've just never been exposed to them. So because of um, massive travel potential, international travel, um, it's, we're exposed to all kinds of things that maybe we would never – we could go our whole lives living 
you know, within our country and never be exposed to. So the human body is overwhelmed with these new threats. For example, in North Africa, humans are evolving with immunity to malaria, which is a major threat to other geographic areas. I've traveled to Africa, you know, and in Africa, before I go, one of the things I have to take is I have to have malaria medicine. Okay, because that's not as big of a threat here in the United States. But because it's so common in, in northern Africa, people are actually beginning to they're beginning to be born and create this immunity. They're evolving. They're creating an immunity to malaria because it's something that their bodies are exposed to all the time. Now, when we empower our immune systems with superior transfer factor and nanofactors from cows and chickens from various geographic areas, we can deal with the overwhelming human conditions mentioned above, like chemicals, pathogens common in specific areas, those types of things. Now, some transfer factors and nanofactors come from colostrum, but transfer factors are the most important aspect of colostrum. Okay, I want to go back to one little thing said here. It talks about from various geographic areas. When we when our immune systems have superior transfer factor from cows and chickens from various geographic areas. I want to explain and expound on that just a little bit. Here in the U.S., we have cows and chickens all throughout the United States in different areas because you go down south, it's very humid, it's very hot, there's lots of mosquitoes, there's lots of things that, you know, the humidity breed, uh, different types of allergies. We have cows and chickens in the south that, that are exposed to these different things. We have cows and chickens up north where it's very cold and bitter and there's different types of allergens and there's different types of, of uh, diseases, there's different types of insects that can cause uh, different things. You have people on the east and the west coast. So we have cows and chicken farms strategically placed throughout the United States. When their colostrum is, is taken or when the transfer factors are taken from the colostrum or the egg, it is flash frozen and sent to our laboratories here in, uh, or in Sandy, Utah. And once it's put there, it's mingled, co-mingled is what they call it, means they make a giant soup out of the transfer factors from all over the U.S. And the reason they do this is so that every single batch of transfer factor has immune information from every single uh, geographic area on the United States map. What this does, this allows you and I to be able to have immunity to everything in every area of the U.S. Um, without having to necessarily go down there and, and expose ourselves to it over long periods of time. So by having a, the information, once again, as we spoke on the first few slides, being able to transfer that immunity, being able to transfer that intelligence, being able to transfer all of that uh, modulation and experience there, being able to transfer that from those cows and chickens from all over the U.S. to you and I in every capsule gives us a whole and complete uh, protection from all of these things that are superior to our own system. You know, these, these cows and chickens are exposed to things on a daily basis that you and I as humans will never be exposed to simply because of the fact that they are exposed to the elements, they are, their living conditions, their food, their, everything about what they do is things that if we had to do it, we would have a hard time surviving. You know, you don't you don't drive by a herd full of cattle and find you know two thirds of them uh, belly up from disease and things like that. They're able to do this. You know, anthrax, which is deadly to humans, is often been called the cow disease because it's found in spores. And cows walk around grazing and go right by those spores. You don't see them killing over from it. Um, so these are different things that you can learn by taking transfer factors from other hosts and from the cows and chickens. That's why this is so superior. Now, don't confuse consuming colostrum with our transfer factors and nanofactors. You would have to consume 90 pills of colostrum in order to get one serving of four lax transfer factors and nanofactors. Now, I bring this up because there are companies out there that are marketing what they're calling hyperimmunized colostrum, or they're calling, you know, uh, colostrum, whole colostrum, and, and they're trying to sell it as though that the whole colostrum is better than the transfer factors being taken out of it. Well, there's a couple of problems with that, and I'm going to give you one of the most obvious ones, and that is that transfer factor is a very uh, delicate molecule, okay? There's a reason why our company is the only company that has been able to bring 100% 
pure, transfer factor nanofactors and keep them bioactive. There's a reason our companies only want to do it. It's a very expensive, very tedious process to be able to extract that from colostrum, extract it from egg yolk. Now, our company pioneered and patented that process, okay, and no one else is willing to take the time, the effort, or the money that it takes. It's a very expensive process to be able to do that so they can bring the product to market. Most companies want to create something for pennies on the dollar and then sell it for a huge amount of profit. With our company, we knew when Transfer Factor first came to market back in 1998 that we were going to be taking a loss at first to get this product out there, but we believed in what the product could do. We saw the science. We believed in the efficacy and of the quality of our product and decided that we were going to go ahead and take a little less profit off of each bottle of product so that we could bring the product to market and have something unique and something that's only available through our company. So when someone says, I have colostrum, and isn't whole colostrum better than taking just part of it, another issue with that is that because transfer factors are so sensitive, they don't survive any type of uh, you know, extreme heat um, or different types of, of extremes with the molecule. Now, colostrum is considered dairy product, okay? Anytime something is dairy at all, before it goes to market, regardless of what form it's in, it has to be pasteurized, and in most cases, it's pasteurized more than once. It goes through more than one pasteurization process. That's to remove anything that they feel like could be a, uh, a threat to your system, you know, uh, bacterias or viruses or anything that could be in there. The pasteurization kills all that. Well, here's the problem. Transfer factors would not and they cannot survive the pasteurization process. So when someone tells you I have whole colostrum and that's where you're going to get your transfer factors, the amount of transfer factors that may possibly survive <laughs> that particular pasteurization process are very, very few. That's why in order to get one serving of transfer factors, you'd have to consume 90 pills of colostrum in order to come close to one serving of transfer factors. And a lot of those transfer factors within the colostrum are either damaged or dead. They don't survive that process. So that's something to keep in mind. Just because someone's selling colostrum and we get transfer factors from colostrum or from egg yolk does not mean that they have active transfer factors does not mean that it's uh, that they have what our product has because we've done the research we know the science and absolutely it does not survive that process so there's no way you're going to get the same amount of effectiveness uh, from the transfer factors uh, in whole colostrum as from our product so that's going to conclude the um, the slides and things for today. And I wanted to just reiterate, you know, if you have a screen share, I hope you're able to follow along during that because there's a lot of information that we exposed about what transfer factors are and how they work here in this uh, particular training session. So what I want to do is um, just, again, at the end of this series, at the end of this series of 12, we will make all of this information available to you. Um, we will, we've been recording all of these, and so they'll be, the recordings will be released. Um, we'll be able to release the PowerPoints, and then for those of you who speak a different language or um, have a particular language you'd rather have the PowerPoint in, we will translate those PowerPoints so that you will have those. So at the end of this 12-week period, you will have all this information made available to you. Now, in the interim, if you are interested in taking this information to your team, taking this information to your prospects, you can request it um, from our office to be put into, you know, a language or um Actually, I believe until the 12 weeks is up, I don't believe we're going to translate those just yet. Um, but we will get the PowerPoint over to you. And so long as you can understand the English, you can translate it yourself for your uh, for your uh, distributors. So that is an option. If you don't want to wait till the 12 weeks is up and you'd like to get this information so that you can start teaching your team about it, um, you can request that, and we can get those PowerPoints over to you. So I wanted to, uh, again, thank everyone for being on the line. And remind you, uh, we do have these these uh, training calls every Wednesday at 9 p.m. India time. We also will have our our normal um, 
presentation call on Friday at 9, all on this same line. So uh, feel free to come back often and to listen and to uh, gain some information on how to maximize your business. And maximizing your business goes everything from learning about the products to learning about the compensation to learning about why this company, where each week we're taking on a different segment of information that will help you in prospecting people, help you in training your people so that you guys can be as effective as possible. Um, we want to see everyone succeed and we want to make sure that you have access to all these tools and training.